While we've covered the concepts of linear momentum and how to solve collision equations in AP Physics 1, how are these quantities defined in AP Physics C? Before we looking at some concepts from AP Physics 1, one extremely fascinating new concept we need to learn about is called center of mass. The center of mass is a property of an object or system of objects that will come in handy later, and has different definitions depending on what mass distribution we're looking at. For uniformly dense geometric objects like a ball, cube, square, or triangle, the location of the center of mass of these objects is simply the geometric center of its object. This means the center for circular or square objects, and the centroid or intersection of medians of triangular objects. For systems of point masses located at different positions, the center of mass location can be defined as the summation of the mass times their distances from an origin you get to choose, all divided by the sum of the masses. Finally, for mass distributions such as a rod of varying density, the center of mass is defined as the integral of the position with respects to the infinitesimal masses divided by the total mass of the system. Here, the infinitesimal mass you integrate along will usually be related to the position through some density function given to you in the problem. The center of mass in many ways represents the core of the motion of an object or system of objects. One revision to Newton's first law is that for objects experiencing zero net force, the center of mass will not accelerate. This does not mean that the rest of the object must not accelerate. For example, a wheel rolling without slipping has all points except the center accelerating due to their velocity changing directions constantly. However, it's the center of mass, or the center of the wheel, which moves at a constant velocity, revealing the true nature of the net force on the entire object as a whole. With this new concept learned, let's review some new definitions regarding momentum. First, while we learned that momentum was a vector in AP Physics 1, we can use our vector notation to denote that the momentum vector is in the same direction as the velocity vector. In addition, we also learned that force could be defined as the rate of change of momentum, which we'll now write as the derivative of momentum with respect to time. Finally, we learned that impulse or change in momentum was the product of force over a period of time, which we can account for changing forces now with the integral of force with respect to time. With these couple topics clarified, solving your classic inelastic and elastic collisions will still follow the same exact process. For both situations, use the conservation of momentum equations to equate the momentums before and after, and for elastic situations in specific, include either the energy conservation equation or the relative velocity swap equation I showed you in my previous video. One final trick using our new center of mass idea I wanted to share is that for both inelastic and elastic collisions, the center of mass's velocity actually does not change. While this produces the same exact equations as your momentum equations, it can offer a quick shortcut if both mass values and certain velocities are given to you, as you'll only need one equation that ensures the velocity of the center of mass before and after remains constant. With that, you can feel good that you just finished learning about center of mass and the redefined versions of momentum and impulse.